tag. It smells. It is time for another tag. I'm trying to do quite a few tags in the month of December for Vlogmas, Bookmas, and one of the tags that I wanted to do is the Reader's Problem tag. This was created, I believe, by Michael Romero Talks Books. I've seen this one on quite a few people's channel. I know I saw it on Read by Fred and a few other of the channels that I really like. If I can remember, I will try to link some of those down below. I was not tagged in this video. I don't usually get tagged in tags, I think, because I don't do them in a very timely manner ever. I'm not ever above the trend or on trend when it comes to tags, but I do like doing tags. And I like tags like this that are a little bit less about like individual books and a little bit more provocative and about behind the scenes or your reading tastes or traditions, reading procedures. So question number one is you have 20,000 books on your TBR. I'm, I'm pretty close. I have like 700 books on my TBR. How in the world do you decide what to read next? I'm a mood reader and I actually did a whole video, a whole vlog where I take you along to pick out the next book and my thought process on that. It wasn't about reading, it wasn't really a reading vlog, but it was about picking the next book, how I think about picking the next book, what I do to pick the next book. So you can see that video listed down below, but a shortened version of that is that I, I don't know, I pick it however I want to pick it. A lot of times I'll look at my my recently acquired book spreadsheet, my RAB spreadsheet, and I'll see a book that strikes my fantasy and I'll get it out. A lot of times I'll search my TBR shelves. A lot of times I will have books that I had previously taken out to decide if I wanted to read them or not and I will go through them. Sometimes I will just pick up a book and start reading it. Sometimes I will read the first couple of pages or first keep a couple of sentences of several different books to see what I'm in the mood for. Sometimes I know exactly the book that I want to read next and I just pick it up and read it. It's all very confusing. Mood reading is not as simple as it sounds. Question number two, you're halfway through a book and you're just not loving it. Do you quit or are you committed? It depends on the book. I have been trying to DNF more and stop reading when I'm not interested in a book, when I find myself, you know, getting into a slump because I'm trying to read it or I'm really struggling through a book. I think the majority of the time what I end up doing is picking up another book. I usually have a couple of books on the go. I usually have at least one audiobook and one physical book, but a lot of times I might also have a short story collection or a book of poetry or something like that, maybe a nonfiction that's like vignette -y. maybe I have a nonfiction and a fiction. A lot of times if I'm struggling in a book and I have gotten halfway through, I do try to finish it, but maybe I will read something else for a little while. If I don't have that huge pile of books on the go, I might pick up a new book and put that one down for a little while and then pick it up again, or I might DNF it. I usually don't fully 100% DNF for a while. Like a l almost all the DNFs I've had, I will put on a DNF shelf and I will leave it there. And if I feel like it, I'll come back to it in a couple of months or a year, or I will leave it there. And at the end of the year, I will get rid of it unhaul it. Sometimes it goes back on my TBR depending on what kind of book it is. Sometimes it goes back on a red shelf depending on what kind of book it is. If it's like in one of the collections of books that I have. I should DNF more. I think I should DNF more. I think DNFing is not a bad thing. So when I'm halfway through a book and I'm struggling, usually I just keep struggling. <laughs> Question number three. The end of the year is coming and you're so close but so far away on your Goodreads reading challenge. Do you try to catch up and how? Every year that I've been on Goodreads, every year that I've set a Goodreads challenge, I've set a very very reasonable challenge for myself and I have completed it. This year I have surpassed it to an extreme degree already, but I think that if I were in this situation, no, I wouldn't try to make it up. I mean, maybe a little bit, like if I were 20 books behind, maybe I would try to read some short books to like be a little less behind. I mean, there's a whole discussion to be had about reading too much and about gamifying your reading so that you're not enjoying your reading, but only trying to meet those number goals. So I think hopefully if I were way behind on my Goodreads challenge, I would just read what I read and that would be it and adjust my challenge for the following year. Question number four, the covers of series you love do not match. How do you cope? I don't mind if the covers of series don't match. I mean, I definitely are some series that I like to have the ones that match. Like I'm super glad that all of my Southern Reach books are the same beautiful little paperbacks because they're going to look so pretty when they're all together. But I love to collect vintage series. I love to collect different versions of my 
my favorite books. So books like The Great Gatsby, I have multiple copies of. Books like Agatha Christie novels or Dorothy L. Sayers novels. I love to have multiple versions of the, especially the soft covers, especially the mass market paperback covers. So I don't mind if series don't match. It is satisfying when they do match though. Question number five. Everyone and their mother loves a book you really don't like. Who do you bond with over shared feelings? booktube, of course. I like to have discussions about books that someone likes and I didn't like or that I liked and someone didn't like. I find that to be interesting just because you didn't like a book that I liked doesn't mean we can't have an interesting discussion on it. But there's no one that reads the same kind of books that I do enough. Like my dad reads a lot of the same kind of books that I do, but he also reads a lot of different books. So there's no one that I can talk to enough besides my booktube community and my booktube friends to really like commiserate with when that kind of thing happens. Also I find that like everyone and their mother who's reading certain books I probably just won't read those books like my boss really wants me to read Fourth Wing but I'm just not it's not for me. I know that it's a super popular book and that people love it, but I know that I won't love it, so I'm not even gonna read it, so I don't need anyone to commiserate with. Number six, you're reading a book and you're about to start crying in public. How do you feel? I mean, crying in public is never like the funnest thing, but I definitely cry a lot at books, so I would just cry. Maybe I would try to do it quietly and not like sob, you know, uncontrollably, but I've definitely cried on the subway. I've definitely cried on train rides. I've definitely cried in public reading a book. I guess I just try not to draw attention to myself that much. Question number seven. A sequel of a book you loved just came out, but you've forgotten a lot from the prior novel. Will you reread the book, skip the sequel, try to find synopsis on Goodread, cry in frustration? I often will reread a book if I want to. I don't read a lot of series that need you to go back and read the first book. I read a lot of series that don't build on each other exactly in that way, or I read a lot of series out of order, especially like Golden Age mystery series. So I don't usually have to go back and reread, but I have gone back and reread before and I would do that. But I think mostly I would just look up a synopsis if it was a book that I read recently enough that I don't want to reread it but not recently enough that I can't I can remember what it was about. Question number eight. You do not want anyone anyone borrowing your books. How do you politely tell people nope when they ask? I don't really have this problem. One, I like to lend out books. I do sometimes lend them out with the idea that I'm not going to get them back. I've had that happen quite a bit. So I don't lend out like my favorite versions or my favorite copies of things and some people that I lend books to I do if I'm lending out my favorite copy make sure that they know that and make sure that I want my book back. My BFF has one of my all-time favorite books The Raw Shark Text right now and I do sometimes think about it and hope that he's reading it but also hope that I get that copy back because I do love it but I wouldn't lend out a book you know a version that was like my favorite or my original copy or something like that that I didn't want to get lost. If I know that if I lend out a book it might get lost and never come back to me and that's okay. But I don't really have that problem very much. I only lend books to about like two or three people and they're not, they don't tend to be like my all-time favorite books or they are books that I can certainly get another copy of at, a certain, at some point. Question number nine. You've picked up and put down five books in the last month. How do you get over your reading slump? I'm feeling a little right now, honestly. I'm in a little bit of a reading slump, which I've been thinking of ways that I might want to or try to get out of it. I usually will just pick up books until I find the book that sparks my interest. Sometimes I will reread a book. Sometimes I will pick up specifically very short books or a different format. Like if you're reading a lot of fiction and you can't get into it, maybe picking up a nonfiction. If you are reading a lot of nonfiction and fiction, maybe picking up a poetry book. Something that switches up the way your brain sees reading. I also think audiobooks work for this. But right now, what I decided to do for this particular reading slump that I am currently in is pick up a short story collection. So I've been wanting to finish this short story collection by the end of 2024 anyway. And I find that I can't read short story collections all together. I have to read like one story in the morning and then read something else and maybe read one story at night or one story per day or something like that. So it's a good way to like break up what you're reading and hopefully ideally like get yourself 
to that reading mood and to that excitement for reading. Similar to like reading very short books, I think it's fun to complete a story and that makes me often excited to read more stories. So if I'm struggling with reading a long book or if I'm struggling with the books that I'm reading, sometimes picking up a short story and reading one full short story makes me feel like accomplished and makes me feel excited for reading again. So that's the route I'm taking currently, but we'll see if it works out for me. Question number 10. There's so many new books coming out that you're dying to read. How many do you actually buy? None. I don't buy new books. I don't really follow new releases even. I mean, I see new releases all the time on booktube, so there are new releases that I want to get to that I'm interested in. But since I only get books at little free libraries or use book sales or use bookstores or thrift stores, it's pretty rare to find new release books when you want to find them. I definitely read new release books. I've read four or five 2023 published books this year, which is not a lot, but it kind of is a lot for me because a lot of times I will go whole years without reading a new release book or with only reading one or two. So I do find them and I do enjoy reading them and I'm excited to do so. I don't buy, I don't ever go out and buy a new release book. The only exception to that, the only caveat is that recently friends of mine have been writing books. So I have the last two years bought or pre-ordered a book that someone I know wrote. So those are new releases that I did actually purchase, but those were the only books that I purchased for those two years. That's like a new kind of caveat thing, but that's maybe one book a year. Question number 11, and the last question is, after, after you've bought the new books you can't wait to get to, how long do they sit on your shelves before you get to them? Not that long, actually. So for those two books, which were Something is Always Happening Somewhere by Kelly McClure, I read that one just a few weeks weeks after I got it or a month after I got it. I did a vlog about reading my first ever pre-order. That was super exciting. I will try to list that down below. That was in 2022. And then this year in the end of February, I bought Jessica Haas The Lakeside Cemetery. That's Jess the Book Freak right here on Booktube. And I was super excited to get to it, but I did wait a little while for that one. So I think I got it in early March and I didn't end up reading it until last month, October. So a few months. When I had have new releases that I pick up randomly free or from used establishments from used from places used it depends sometimes I read them right away I read I picked up the writing retreat the writing retreat this year and I ended up reading it just a few months later sometimes it'll be the next year I got the daughter of Dr. Moreau late last year that was published in 2022 and I didn't end up reading it until last month so new releases are not really a thing for me is the answer unless they're put out by friends of mine so those are all the questions on the readers problem tag those are some interesting problems to have what are some problems that you have as a reader. I think my biggest problem is that I have so many books that I want to get to and not enough time to get to them all or not enough brain capacity to get to them all. I think definitely getting into slumps can be a problem for me. I think wanting to talk about all the books that I've read and having a limited amount of outlet to talk about them. I do get to talk to my husband. I do get to talk to my friends who read. I do get to talk to my father. But uh, like I said, because I'm a primarily a back list reader and because I read such a wide variety of genres and books it's hard to find someone who's found the same books. I love booktube for that and the community for that but it is a little bit one-sided here too you know because a lot of times it is just me talking to a camera which is better than nothing but it's a reader problem I would say being able to talk about all the books that you want to talk about and being able to read all the books that you want to read. So let me know what your problems as a booktuber are. Let me know the answers to this tag in the comments down below if you don't have your own booktube or consider yourself tagged. This tag has been going around for quite a while so I'm not going to tag anyone specifically for this one because I know a lot of people that I watch have already done this one but if you are watching this and you would like to do this tag I would definitely tag you. Thanks so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!